stream? It is. Oh, sweet. Did you have the link for that? Uh, I posted on Facebook. I'm pretty okay. I'm pretty yeah. sure. Okay, sure. sweet. Got it? Got it. <laughs> Got it.
Good morning. Good morning. My, my name is Daniel Rainey, and this is... Alex Gove. We are two master's percussion students, although you've probably seen us before. Yes. And uh, David, thank you for this, you know, excuse for me to dress up, because yep. I will never really pass on that. Yeah, nice fast. Thanks, man. Good. Yeah, you know, I was really wondering if I should go with this or like the gray pinstripe thing. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really know if I should try too hard. Well... I really need to appear aloof in these situations, you know. I think you made the right choice, and I'm glad you are. And to those of you watching the live stream, you must be really bored. <laughs> but I really hope you find something to do with your day today. Yes. Well, shall we get started? Yeah. Well, hey, first we have this snazzy introduction on video. Dan, we can pull that up. really cool that was a cool introductional video yeah. that I couldn't see what's right there <laughs> all right should we get started yes we should we have a variety of articles that we're going to be discussing today and the first one by Helen Neviker I hope I pronounced that correctly sounds about right what you should do in practice rooms oh yeah what are your thoughts about this well there's a lot of things you should do in practice rooms and honestly I think you should have a practice room dog, which is why I brought Mr. Song. It's cute. This is Song. I always have him in the practice room while I'm playing timpani, specifically. Mostly so that I can practice looking at a conductor. It's scarier than any conductor you will ever encounter in your own life, so yeah. I'll leave him right here. He'll know if you play out of time. <laughs> yeah, you will. Yeah. With regards to the article, well, I, I don't much want to go into the actual content of this article, but I will respond to it with this. I think it's really important to cultivate sort of a mutual respect with one another within the walls of this school. You know, it's, it's really easy to create and to perpetuate these negative feelings toward facilities and toward other students. You know, we all have a lot going on. We're all really stressed, but if you allow yourself to cultivate these feelings and to spread them around, you will be doing a disservice to yourself and to those around you, and it's going to impede the trajectory that we're all trying to see through here. Yes. That's all I have to say about that. Well, do you want to talk about what we do in the practice room? I mean, we're both first when, year masters. When we're actually in there? Yes. <laughs> Daniel and I have a tendency. Well, here's, here's just something you shouldn't do in the practice room. Well. You know, all the percussion uh, practice rooms at the school we go to are near each other. Right. And they all have these little windows where you can see people. So first thing you should do in the morning is definitely not go and bother your friend in the practice room. Because not only does you're it waste... You're talking to me, right? Yeah. You're totally <laughs> talking to me. We're talking about each other, yeah. Yeah, Because not only does it waste their time <laughs> in the room, it, you know, it's just taking time out of other people because other people could be waiting for that practice room. So... We're such social creatures. Yeah. And definitely don't go on long breaks to fill up water bottles. Absolutely don't walk all the way around the basement floor only to walk into other people, which is something Alex and I, we would never do something course, like that. Of course. I mean, because that would waste time. Yeah. I mean, do you really need to drink water? I mean, come on. Yeah. Just get Plus, like Coca-Cola or something. Yeah, there's a water, bond, a water fountain close to... It's true. You know, there's two in the basement. Can we talk about the disappearance of the urinal cake in the downstairs men's bathroom? Maybe a little bit later? It was just... I was very disappointed to see it go. Yeah, me too. It smelled really good. It was really nice. Um, but yeah, I guess, you know, in the practice rooms, just use your time wisely. There's a number of students that go here. I mean, there's 15 in the percussion studio with six rooms. Mm -hmm. You know, every, somebody's waiting. So if you're just on there on your phone or That's on your true. computer or, you know, talking with friends, it's not really the best use of time. Other than that, I mean... Just, just practice, really. Also, it's really easy to sort of practice with the knowledge that there are people listening to you. And like, let's be honest here, there is always somebody listening to you practice. It's an unfortunate reality that we have to face. But personally, I find I have a bad habit when somebody walks by to sort of like try to, to show off what I've been working on a little bit. I mean, it's, it's a little bit, you know, immature, but it's, it's something I try to get over it was much worse than my undergrad, but just, that's one thing. Just try to focus on yourself. Try to box yourself in. 
don't worry about that outside world because we're all on our own trajectories. Everybody has to work on their own specific fundamentals. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, these rooms leak a lot, but, you know, there's some especially distortion. Especially the percussion rooms. Especially the <laughs> percussion rooms. Despite now, the concrete multiple layers that they attempted to put in the walls. Yes. We're just too it's loud, loud, which means we're really good, I think, if you're really loud. Yeah, if our notes ring and resonate Absolutely. Through, uh, through the room. Such tone. Yeah. What else do we have here? Yeah. Want to go to the next article? Or? I would love to. Okay. So this one is entitled Six Qualities That All Musicians Should Have, and it's written by Dylan Welsh, who is a guitar player in the Seattle area. It's a little background on that. Um, so yeah, uh, should we just talk about each each point as they go? Mm -hmm. Essentially what Dylan is doing, he kind of sums up every quality that a successful musician allegedly has and he breaks it down into six specific points. And we're essentially going to go through these points one by one and we're going to discuss our feelings toward them, we're going to elucidate upon what he said about these topics. Yes. And we're going to start doing that right now. It's a great time to do it. All right. Quality number one. They have no other choice. Um, well, I really feel like that's not true for everybody. What he says is, um, is uh, you know. I mean, how plausible is it really for a specialized career such as this to be one's only yeah. choice yeah. Didn't trajectory? You? I mean, I know you did. You did something besides just performance in undergrad, right? Right. I was also doing audio engineering at Peabody. And I must say, it was very difficult to put 100% of my focus into both of those majors at the same time. So eventually, I was pretty much forced to make a choice. But I, I, don't, I don't quite know if that applies to this or not, because that's like two really big career paths. But I... I what about musicians that don't have a double major or that, you know, have only really been doing music since, you know, they were in middle school and they decided that's what they wanted to do. And then you find yourself this far along having to make a difficult choice. Yeah. Um, that's interesting. And when, you know, I, I think I've told you a little bit about, you know, deciding for music for me. Right. Because originally when I was going for undergrad, I was deciding between percussion performance and gymnastics because mm -hmm. um, I got a scholarship to do that because I I right. was really into the horizontal bar when I was when I was younger and I was in the um, youth Olympics for it and things like that. But I remember talking with my um, a, my gymnastics coach about it. We've had several talks about it. And, mm -hmm. You know, we just really needed to dive in. And, and mainly our discussion was between the two of them, which one would I have more drive for? And, and even he, he was like, you know, Alex, I've, I know how hard you work for gymnastics, but I see how you work on music and that did you try and put more, so much more effort into that. And he said he'd been to my concerts and he's seen me play. Right. That he really wanted me to do, do music. Um, even though he said that I'd be a great gymnast. Mm -hmm. um, his name was Mr. Johansson, right? You, you've yeah. talked to me about him before. Oh, yeah. I mean, from what you said, he was such a tremendous inspiration, yeah. not just in gymnastics, but, you know, sort of in, in making the effort to discipline yourself. Yeah. That's, which was one of the biggest things that Alex told me about when we were talking about this one time, was just, like, taking your own initiative and pretty much deciding how seriously you want to take this, you know, regardless... You know, regardless of what it is you decide to do. <laughs> you alright? What's going yeah, on? Sorry. I just, just choked a little bit. Do okay. that iced tea. That's a lot of sugar, man. Yeah, it is. I don't really like those things because I feel like, what is it, like 70 grams of sugar or something? Like, uh, whenever I drink something 33. like... 33. I mean, that was pretty close. Yeah. But, like, I always find I kind of go on a sugar crash, you know, if I'm drinking these sugary drinks. Which is why I just resort to, you know, other stuff. Yeah. You know, like coffee. Anyway, okay. yeah. would you like Great to stuff. proceed to the next topic of conversation? Yes. Um, Number two in Dylan's highly successful and informative article. Would you like to say this one? Yeah, sure. Um, so the number two, the second point, 
uh, that he's said is that musicians are willing to work hard and educate themselves. Now, that's very true. Now, what he's saying for this, um, and the article, he, he provides a little description for all of these. Um, and what he's saying for this one is he says musicians must be able to fill multiple roles. You know, it's not just that you're good at performing or anything. Um, he says often when you're in a band, members will need to split the roles of <coughs> manager, promoter, and, and booking agent between the group. So it's not just educating yourselves about how to play the instrument and, and music theory and ear training and, and all that stuff. It's, it's about, you know, some of the business sides too and how to really market yourself as a musician. You essentially have to facilitate your own career and the very many aspects of doing that. And there's a lot of things that people don't think about. Personally, I think there's a lot of classes that aren't being taught on how to, you know, make these things happen for yourself. You know, there should be more classes about business in music. There should be more classes about performance practice, which I'm sure there are. Yeah. You know, essentially things like that. You know, and all of these educational classes, you know, to do with musicology and things of the like are incredibly useful. But what if there was a way to, you know, specialize in different areas? You know, what if you want to freelance? What kind of classes could be offered that could facilitate that or, you know, educate us on yeah. how to make that happen? Mm -hmm. Maybe I want to move to New York after this, you know? Yeah, true. I don't actually want to do that, but you know. It's I like New York actually. Yeah. It's pretty nice there. Yeah. They have New a lot York of City? good food. Yeah. Oh really? Oh yeah. I've never been, but I've heard it's great. I mean, like you can get tacos whenever you want. Usually for yeah. me, it's like three thirty, four in the morning is the only time I really want tacos throughout my good time. day to day, you know, eating regimen. Yeah. So yeah, that point was mainly just, you know, before you start talking about tacos a little bit, which I, I can't wait for the new barrio to open up. Where is that again? I don't know. Somewhere around here. Oh, man. I'm really excited um, for that. So, yeah. It's mainly just about the business side and educate yourself more about other things rather than just playing. I think it's interesting that he says work hard and educate yourself, but then he kind of talks about the facilitation of a freelance career in this specific paragraph. It kind of doesn't quite match up with the title of the paragraph, but I think he, the, he dives into these things later on in the article, too, right? Yeah, I think that... the the description he wrote for it is better necessarily than the point that True. he wrote. But it's all still good. True. Yeah. Number three. Number three. They okay. don't mind living modestly. That is a reality that we have to face. A lot of money goes in to facilitating our own musical careers. We have to purchase instruments, we have to rehair bows, we have to repair cracks. Yeah. I might have to buy timpani at some point in my life. I'm just yeah. gonna have to pretend that I don't yeah. ever have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's expensive. How much do timpani normally cost, for those that might not know? <clears throat> they can go up to $60,000. And I should say up to and above that. Yeah, which I guess have. is really no information whatsoever. Sorry. Yeah. It's around it's just, that. Yeah, and you have to buy heads. True. Calfskin heads for timpani can cost up to $400 each, and you break them all the time, especially oh, if yeah. you're really good, which oh, yeah. means you play super loud. It's yeah. the same thing. And timpanists that you study with probably goes through a few. Yeah. yeah I mean, they're expensive <laughs> heads. Yeah, so living modestly is really important. I have a friend that pays $200 for his living situation right now, which is amazing that he found that. Oh, Kevin? Had, who's, who's Kevin? That's, just keep on going. Yeah, yeah, essentially that. That's all I have to say about that for now. Yeah, so, you know, because we'll, we're musicians, I mean, and especially if we don't all win orchestra jobs, just graduating, that, you know, we're gonna have to live in some less than ideal situations, unless, you know, you have a lot of money. Somehow, or the gigs come flowing in. Just have to. Could happen to be any ready of us. Yeah, true. Very true. All right. Numero cuatro. Numero cuatro. All right, they have a patient, persistent attitude. And this is basically just saying, you know, a career doesn't appear overnight, especially not in the arts. Um, and it says basically you have to you have to be patient to work on your craft. I mean. It's, it's, it makes a lot of sense 
where you know there might not be times where you have a lot of you know gigs lined up so you got to start being patient for them to come in and also you know going out and trying to get more for yourself a lot of the patients can do with you know your own technical development too you know I, I mean what, what I've been doing this semester in terms of my own practice regimen as kind of previously discussed is how it's something I really should have been doing in my undergrad these fundamental things that I should have been working on I kind of put off till now it's a bit of an imbalance and it's really not advised specifically to undergrads to yeah. try to move too quickly or to try to push your body for further than it you know is really ready to go at the moment so it's just something to keep in mind for, for the undergrads because myself I just kind of wanted to get to the most virtuosic repertoire right away oh yeah while still leaving holes actually caused a pretty serious bout of tendonitis to myself a few years ago so it's really important to avoid injury and the best way to avoid injury is patience yeah a lot of times you know I don't want to get into this because I'm not a doctor or anything but you know if you feel anything or tight or, or tendonitis I know there's a few things happening like that or happen like that and to some people you know just taking time off of your instrument right. is a good thing also talking with your teacher your doctor going to a doctor mm -hmm. would be a really good thing I know some people don't want to do that but it's crazy to think that you know you can just keep on playing and it'll go away now okay I'm sure there's a lot of you actually right now that are dealing with this problem I just want to say that personally when I started dealing with my tendonitis I kind of wanted to pretend that it wasn't there and the worst decision I ever made was kind of not believing that it existed which is really easy to do in the short term maybe oh I just need to learn this Vivaldi piece for my next lesson or I've got this recital I'm doing for myself I was trying to play early music gigs I was trying to play piano I was trying to exercise too much and had I been able to tell myself something my junior year at Peabody, it would have been just stop. And I would have had to stop playing for maybe three weeks, and it would have been unfortunate. But that would have been much easier than the six months that I was forced to stop playing. So if you find yourself starting to come across these issues, it's really important to have a very frank discussion with yourself and with your teachers about how you're going to proceed. Do not ignore it. I personally know of a lot of people going through this right now, so yeah, I just wanted to say yeah, that. Yeah, I know, and, and you brought up a thing about the gym. Earlier this year, Jamie Reynolds and I went to the gym, and I you know, must have just overloaded myself, and then my mm -hmm. arm started hurting, and you know, I waited a day. Trying to be Mr. World. Yeah. Um, you know, and and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm trying to be Mr. Will. And, you know, I waited a day, and I tried to play on it, and it just hurt. And, you know, I was just thinking to myself, like, okay, I'm going to stop playing today. I'm going to go see a doctor. And I did. Turns out I just my muscles were just too tense. Yeah, of course. Yeah. So they just gave me some muscle relaxant, and then mm -hmm. I was fine to practice the next day. It always, like, when you try to learn a new technique in anything, whether it's an exercise or you're trying to change technique about your playing, that is when an injury will happen. Because your muscles are not used to working together in the same way, they are not connected as they would be had you been practicing it for a long time. They are forced to compensate with sheer force alone. And that will cause something like an increased yes. bout of tension. And so be very careful and mindful of that. Yeah, Maybe we should get back to the the thing. You want to go to the gym today, actually? No. Kind, kind of my feel parent, like my I, mom's coming. Oh, your mom's coming? Yeah, my brother. Oh, I haven't met them yet. Right. Well, I'll look forward to that. Probably won't. That's okay. Yeah. I didn't, okay. I didn't know um, so yeah, back to the article. Maybe we'll do um, a discussion on on this type of thing later. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That would that'd be good for another another episode. Okay. The fifth thing is that they're willing to and enjoy working on their craft every day. Yeah. I mean. It's not, you know, a, it's not a lot to need to elaborate yeah, on. Yeah, and we're all here for music, or wherever we're going to school for music. Right. And we all enjoy playing music, I hope. Because if not, then, you know, maybe reconsider. 
something. Of course. Um, but yeah, just, you know, you love the technical development on the instrument, you know, facilitation mm -hmm. and moving around, and you just love the repertoire and enjoy, enjoy playing in. Even though, you know, there's some days where I wake up and, like, snare drum's the last thing I want to do. Of course. But, you know, normally I'll play for, like, an hour and I'll be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I really like doing this, you know. Yeah, and so if you ever find that you, you know, over a long period of time you're losing a little bit of motivation, you should, I mean, maybe it is a good time to take at least just a small break from playing, you know. Yeah. Not, not a large break, not too much to where you will really impede yourself, but... Sometimes it's important to do other things. Do other things that you love for a little while. Refresh yourself. Kind yeah. of give yourself a little bit of a reboot. Yeah. If that ever becomes a problem, which it certainly has for me. Oh, yeah. Beyond my years of playing. And I'm sure it has for all of us. I'm sure it has for David. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just, you know, find something else you like to do. Like, with snowing, sledding. Maybe go sledding for a day. Highly recommend yeah, sledding. It's great. Even though, maybe not today. Doesn't seem like there's enough snow on the ground, but hey. Snowball it's fight, yeah. Cutter Field. There will be snow in a few days. Oh, yeah. It'll be, be cold. But <laughs> yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm escaping to even colder stuff. I'm going to be doing bit. the opposite. I'll be in Austin where it's probably 60 degrees. All right. It'll be fun. Yeah. You know, if you get burned out a little bit on playing, you know, whatever rep your teacher the sign. you can always just try and bring in some, not like for a lesson, bring in something fun, but you can always just work on, you know, sometimes movie music is kind of fun. Exactly. Like anything like that or just... Any other applications, yeah. really. Try and play some rock music. Mm -hmm. I know I'm playing I do set. enjoy rock mon enough. Yeah. That's not rock. That's so... What? Rock and roll mon enough. All right. Let's continue. <laughs> okay. So that one was they're willing to work on the craft every day. And they enjoy doing it. Then the sixth one is um, they're creative at generating income. Very important. Yes. Because it's how you get money. Because income is money. Also, very realistically, I mean, we're not all going to find ourselves in a performance career that supports us 100%. You know, supports us buying a home, leasing a car, you know, raising owning, a, a owning a dog. Raising it's, a family. It's all really expensive. Um, it's very likely you will have to do something on the side until you achieve the position that you are here to achieve. But it's, it's going to take a while. Yeah. So. And what, I don't even want to talk about loans. Yeah. <laughs> so let's not. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Ignoring the problem. That's great. That's usually what um, So yeah. In this, in this, in his description in the article, he says, he mentions aside from, aside from, you know, he doesn't really say an orchestra job because... I don't know if this guy's an orchestra musician or not. Um, he talks about how you can teach music. It's a pretty obvious one. We've all probably done that. Right. Um, he says you can, can write music and license music to be used in TV shows, movies, and ads. And he also mentions one that is nice. It's um, to work with an establishment like a restaurant or some place to set up bi-weekly or even monthly performances where you go and play play a little concert and whatnot. Yeah. I think that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. um, my brother is actually um, a jazz guitar player in Chicago, and actually I'm going back this, this weekend uh, for my sister's engagement party, but he has this nice. show. He plays at this Creole restaurant once a month um, on Fridays, mm -hmm. and he always brings in a super huge crowd, and they, it pays well, and it's a good thing to do. So it'd be smart. It's excellent. Yeah. yeah, taking sidekicks is always a really fun way to get yourself out there and to make people fall in love with what you do. A lot of people aren't very educated or even aware that certain types of music exist, so yeah. why not bring that to them, right? Yeah, and doing things. Well, we have another article that's, that's, that's kind of like... Jumping right on that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we have one before that. Well, of course. But yeah, that's just another one that talks about... Um, a thing called group muse but we'll get into that a little bit later after this, this article. Mm -hmm. So that was the six qualities that all successful musicians have and I'll just read them down one more time. Number one, they have no other choice. Number two, 
they're willing to work hard and educate themselves. Number three, they don't mind living modestly. Four, they have a patient, persistent attitude. Five, they're willing to and enjoy working on their craft every day. Mm -hmm. And six, they're creative at generating income. Well done, yeah. Mr. Dillon. Thank you very much for your contribution. If he's watching this, I'm not sure if he yeah. is. And if he is, thank you. No. All right. Let us continue. Next article by Illinois Eleanor Cooper is how can we increase diversity in classical music? And I think specifically in this article, she was talking about diversity at, in, in composers. Mm hmm Especially. Right. Of course. Yeah, a, a lot of what this article does, it, I mean, it, it kind of reflects upon the innate racial and gender bias that is existent when, you know, when one is choosing their own repertoire because we have this canon of music that we always choose from. And, I mean, this article, it, it doesn't really get into ways of alleviating that. Rather, it just states the problem. Yeah. But if this is something we really want to fix, the only way it can really be done is to take the initiative to program pieces by composers such as Ignacio Sancho, George Walker, Chevalier de St. George's, composers of the like, you know, composers of different heritages. It's really important that we take the initiative to program these pieces. Yeah, um, it doesn't really offer any suggestions on how to do that. It just says that there's a need to. Mm -hmm. However, it, it is very easy to forget that this is a problem. So yeah. that that is the value of this article, is to make known that this is still a huge issue, especially in the musical canon. Oh, yeah. And I guess it's our job as up-and-coming you know, professional musicians to, and I mean, when we're students, so we have time to do it, too, mm -hmm. you know, is to research some of these lesser-known composers. And, and, and perform their music. I'm sure there's several you know, string quartets out there that are really kicking mm -hmm. that, that aren't played as much just because you know everyone wants to play you know, the standard ones. Exactly. Like Mozart and Bartok. And it's hard not to Beethoven. love the standards. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, I mean, standards are great to play, but I feel like we should also include, include other works too. Absolutely. You know, to expand the, the listener's palette a little bit. I mean, it's, I mean, it's coming off that like Alex and I also aren't extremely knowledgeable on other composers, you know, and that's yeah. that's something that I think we're also going to take the initiative to at least ourselves learn about these different composers, learn about the probably ninety nine percent of music out there that has yet to be discovered by myself or Mr. Yeah. Scove. And Mr. Scove is my father. You just call me Alex. Hey, Alex. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I know it's a little bit for percussion because, you know, there's no Bach percussion ensemble number one. Which would be pretty yet. interesting. Yeah. Until we bring him back, right? Don't talk about that. Yeah, okay. Keep it down. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, so so we do have a little bit of, of you know, outside, outside composers mm -hmm. because most of them are, like, living now or, you know, just recently or something like that so that's good but still I mean even even though we're playing stuff mm -hmm. there's still other people out there you know there really is yeah there really is okay well should we move on to the next one I believe we should okay I I really this, love this next article yeah me too it's really good it was written by um, Tamara 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 best for the New York Times it's called I went to my first classical music concert it was in my living room so essentially you know she talks about group muse which is essentially okay so actually I'd rather start off with her own story where she essentially had like they hosted a string quartet called the Zaffir Quartet in her living room and she had never really been exposed to Mozart before, but they played the string quartet in G. It doesn't even say if it's G major or minor. However, it was one of Mozart's string quartets. In G. In G. Yeah. 
And, you know, it wasn't just her, but it was everybody in the living room was captivated by this. So we decided to kind of explore w what it is that makes it different. Yeah. And I think one of the biggest differences is the intimacy that you experience when you are this close yeah. from the first violinist in the confines of your own living room. You're all on the same level. Yeah. It gets rid of the sort of elitist vibe of having a raised stage and having these stage lights and just being overall separated, forming a chasm between the performer and the audience. Not to mention, it's in a comfortable room for you. Uh, she was mentioning how she didn't feel super comfortable in the concert hall, but now that she was in her own living room and you know sitting in her own couch with the musicians on her chairs mm -hmm. and all that thing made her you know just enjoy it more knowing that there's nothing to worry about because she was talking about how you know if she were to go out to see a concert she'd dress up really nicely and all of that but I think here she said she just put on like a sweatshirt or something <laughs> I don't remember I should have written that down but somewhere in the article yeah so just how she can feel more comfortable than rather going out which I think could be a thing for even professional orchestras too you know I was talking with some people how they really don't like the idea of a tuxedo it's so all. stuffy yeah. you know and it it again like it just separates the audience from the performers I think a bit too much for the current standards of you know music people it, it's a little bit closer now than it was before you know there's not this separation there's not this sort of elitism that is kind of ever present in orchestral music performances that I don't think really needs to be there yeah not to mention I mean I am, I'm assuming for other players it's it is too but for us it's kind of hard to play in a tux you know especially if you gotta play snare drum the stick could get caught in your sleeve or mm -hmm. or chimes where you have to raise your hands all the way up to your head length or triangle. That's why I have the habit of rolling my sleeves up. Yeah. That's where that came from. Oh, nice. You ever try playing snare drum with sleeves? It gets caught in your sleeve. Yeah. Total disaster. Oh, yeah. Yet yeah, we always have to wear tuxedos anyway. I don't know. Yeah, why. so it's a lot of just, ugh, I'm gonna play. <laughs> so it pulls the sleeves up, mm -hmm. and then you can just go play. Exactly. Yeah. So, like, ex essentially, it, it facilitates being able to relate to the performers a lot more easily. You know, and that's why I really liked reading this article because a lot of people don't talk about classical music in in this environment. And honestly, <clears throat> it's it's kind of our job to cultivate the next generation of loyal patrons of yes. you know these types of performances. And to do that, we're going to have to acquiesce to these different ideas of why certain concerts are popular. We have to explore these differences and we have to adjust because we're still adhering to a lot of the standards that were formed a very long time ago. Yes. Um, yeah, and I think group muse is a great great way to do it, mm -hmm. to, bring, to bring music to people. Um, and basically, I'm on their website now, I mean, I should have written down some, some things about it earlier. Um, but basically, it's just saying that you know, you get a place, like a house or an apartment, or somewhere like that. Um, bring your own drinks. I mm -hmm. wish I could say I was making that up, but it says it on there. Um, guests under 21 are welcome. And then there's a $10 minimum payment that each person needs to do. But mm -hmm. it also allows you to donate more than that. Absolutely. So that you can... Essentially you know, pay what you can. Yeah, basically. And it's really, really nice. I know... Um, where I did undergrad, we'd often have um, chamber music parties where, mm -hmm. you know, people would just sight read string quartets or woodwind quintets. There weren't really any percussion things, because I mm -hmm. doubt. Not yet. Yeah. Maybe tomorrow. Um, then things like that. And, and I remember one time, they actually, we actually did uh, <laughs> we all just sight read Beethoven 6. <laughs> it was <just> kind of <laughs> funny having a whole giant orchestra in there. But that was pretty cool. That sounds really fun. That was great. So yeah, I enjoy the idea of a more intimate setting for classical music. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, and she talks about how she really likes it in the article. I, I, I'd recommend reading this article. I assume these are going to be up for people to read 
at we'll, some point. We'll figure that out. We'll figure it out. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. If not, uh, it's New York Times article. I went to my first classical music concert. It was in my living room. Mm-hmm. And if you have any further questions about these articles, feel free to contact either of us. We'd be happy to talk about yes, them. Yes, and also join the MuseCast Facebook page. Highly it's, advised. It's called MuseCast. If you just search it on Facebook, it should not be up there. Yeah, right there on the screen. You know, I think in kind of a side note, you know, it's, it's very easy to become stressed out and to start to hone in on a very certain thing you're doing and you kind of forget about a lot of great things that this world has to offer. So I think we should thank Mr. David Morse yes. for creating this show, you know. Like, it, it's very unexpected to find something like this at a music institution, but I think people need a little bit something extra, you know, a little yeah. bit of positive impact or a little bit of really anything to get out of the rut that it's really easy to find yourself in in here. Oh, yeah. So thank you for this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's a great way, you know, to do after practicing. It keeps you up to what's happening in the music world. And, and you know, hopefully it'll help you think a little bit differently about some things. And hopefully some of this advice will, will help you as you continue to study at the school and, Absolutely. and, you know, start your performing career. Oh, right. Um, and also, today we're going to take a moment of silence for the Sandy Hook tragedy that happened four years ago today. So, just keep it quiet. All right. Thank you very much for tuning in. Yes. If you're still watching the live stream, you must really like us. So we very There's much appreciate that. And I like you too. Oh, also, um, we're still looking for writers and technicians for the show. So if you want to have some of your ideas appear here um, or you want to help with anything, just make sure you join the MuseCast Facebook page. And yeah, sure, sure we look forward element. to having you on board. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and I hope you all have a great, you know, break from school. Travel safely. There's a lot of snow out there. Yeah. A lot oh, of yeah. monsters. Yeah, apparently Watch it's supposed to get monsters. really, really snowy tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. Lot, like a lot of snow is going to, like, come out of the sky. Where are you, what are you doing for break? I'm going to Austin. Oh, really? Yeah, it's going to be really Austin, exciting. Texas. Oh, cool. What are you planning on doing down there? I, I haven't made too many plans yet, but I just get to... I'm just really excited to see my family because I haven't really gotten to see the majority of them since spring break. It's been a really long time. Hey, going off of that, yeah, my brother just, just got him from China the other day. And wow. I haven't seen him in a year and a half. Yeah, oh, wow. I know, right? It's going to be really exciting to see him then. Yeah, he comes in today at 4 or 5. Do you have any right. plans yet with him? Um, well, today he's going to hang out with one of his friends from undergrad. Right. Um, but then tomorrow we're going to Chicago because mm -hmm. my sister has an engagement party, which will be really fun. Right. Give me a chance to see some of my cousins that I haven't seen in a little bit because mm -hmm. we moved to North Carolina right. a few years ago. But yeah, be great. It's supposed to be really snowy though. So, should be a good time. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. Thank you, Song, for showing your presence Song. here. Making me less nervous, aren't you, little guy? Oh, so cute. Such a cutie. Yeah. I think I'm gonna adopt him. Looks like a dog I saw. I saw this cute dog video the other day. Oh yeah? Yeah. It <laughs> was really cute. Oh man. I kinda wanna look at dog videos right now. Yeah, me too. Alright. Alright. We're done. Yeah, have a great day. Easy.